um, interestingly, we've been, everybody has been talking about building, talking about foundation. And so let's start from here. Proverbs 24, verse 3. Let me read the Amplified Classic. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom a, is a house, a life, a home, a family built. I'll read that again. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation through skillful and godly wisdom. And I thank God for this conference and this meeting because what you have been receiving is not just wisdom, but it is skillful and godly wisdom. You've gotten practical examples. Ladies, do you now know how to talk to your husband? Are you sure? Men, do you now know how to surprise your wives? That's exactly what this conference is about. It's not just to gather you and just read scriptures to you, but to give you very practical things that you can do. And so, as Pastor K and Dr. Olimide were preaching, I was just seeing the, I was just thinking, how do we build to last? How do we build to last? Because one of my biggest concerns, to be honest, is the fact that these days marriages don't last. This thing just, I, I don't know, I, I think that the danger is when, we be, when, we, when it becomes normal to us. When people get married for two months and they break the mind, everybody's like, eh, hey, the marriage, I had another one today. Just today, again, I heard another actor that he just came on his social media and said, oh, him and his wife, and he's asking for his bride price back. I said, has the warranty expired? It's not. So it's becoming normal for people's marriages to end. Marriage, two minutes marriage is over, three minutes. And I know I said this a lot yesterday, but it's just something that has been really bothering me. That why are marriages not lasting anymore? Why are families breaking up so soon? The money that we used to buy Ashwebi doesn't even outlast. Before you even know, before you watch, like I said yesterday, before you watch Ashwebi the second time, people are already sending messages on social media that they're not getting married again. So what can we do differently to make our marriages last? How can we build to last? And that's really what I want to talk to you about tonight. Because it's just been in my heart. It's been, I've been mulling over it over and over again. That was going on. And because I'm, because I'm a counselor, a marriage counselor, I'm always fascinated by the things that break these marriages. They don't reach anything, no. They don't reach anything. The things people talk about, they complain about. I can't. And that's when, like I always say, their phone will just come out. Pastor, I can't. I can't. In fact, I'm unable to con. I can't. I'm like, what? What did they do to you? What did they say to you? I don't like the way he talks to me. That's the way we are talking to each other. It's not really that deep. So sometimes I wonder what is the real problem. And I think like... Most of the time, it's a foundational issue. And Pastor K and Dr. Olumide have emphasized this over and over and over again. Psalm 11 verse 3, that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So we need to go back to the foundation. And the image I have of building is of a house. So I'm probably going to use that to just try to make it clearer to us. So the first thing Jesus said, Luke 14, 28, he says, is there anyone here who is planning to build a new house and doesn't first sit down and figure out the cost so that you will know if you can complete it? If you only get the foundation laid and then run out of money, he says, you are going to look pretty foolish to everyone because people will be passing by and be poking fun at you. That see someone who started what they cannot finish. So for the single people here, before you get into marriage, you have to make up your mind that you're going to be in it for the long haul. Like I said yesterday, you have to take out every window and every door. There's no way out. It's one of the slogans we have in our home. There's no way out. We are here, we are here. So don't the excitement that you used to prepare to get married, I wish you would use it to prepare for the marriage. Because people will buy dresses from everywhere, best designers, get the most expensive event planner, pay for a wedding, plan a shwebi colors, plan everything. But prepare for the marriage itself. I see people who plan weddings with millions, but they can't do marriage counseling. When you tell them marriage counseling, you say, we'll figure it out. You, nobody figures out marriage. I heard someone say today that there's no blueprint for marriage, and I was just laughing. I said, next two months now, you will put video now and tell us that you and your husband are separated. 
There's a blueprint for marriage. There's a way things are done. There's a science to it. There's a way things work. The simple things that, it seems simple, but the things that Pastor K said to you this evening, if you can apply those things, there's a higher chance that your marriage will work. So we need to first start from our perspective from the very beginning. If your marriage is going to work, you have to first make up your mind that I even have what it takes. A lot of people enter into marriage don't even have a clue. Do you know that? <laughs> do you know, Pastor, do you know recently, no, I think it was a couple of years ago, we're asking, we asked a couple of um, newlyweds, you know, what surprised them the most in marriage? And all the ladies said they were surprised that they would cook every day. So the children that are running about, according to Pastor Gide, they are running around with energizer battery. It's not food. They were surprised. You know, because when you are thinking about marriage, you're not thinking about the everyday little things. You will cook. You will clean. You will take those being out. You will pay hospital bills. You will pay school fees. Your, your wife may have a CS. You will pay. There will be unexpected um, um, things that you need to budget for. You will pay house rent. Your in-laws will come. They will annoy you. You know, small, small things that nobody's thinking about that. It's just how we feel when we look into each other's eyes. Why do you want to get married the way she makes me feel? So you need to ask yourself. Go and ask people that have been married. What's marriage really like? What's this? Because when people are rushing into marriage, I'm saying, this thing you are rushing inside. What do you think? That's something my mom used to say when we were growing up. She would say, you don't know the journey you are going on, you are not carrying water. That's what most people are doing, though. They don't know what marriage is about, but they are rushing in. Because you think that immediately after you finish primary school, you must go to secondary school. After secondary school, university. After university, NYSE. After NYSE, then they will start waking you up in the middle of the night, 4 a.m. That when are you getting married? Then they will pressure you. Aunties, aunties in Nigeria. In fact, aunties in Nigeria need to appeal to all of you to leave young girls alone. We'll go for family wedding. That's when they'll come. So when we come and eat your own rice, when you cook it, ma. <laughs> Don't let anybody pressure you into something that can alter the rest of your life. They say, ah, you are not ashamed. All your mates are married. Tell them happy birthday, oh. Let them be going. There's no mate in life. And what about if you don't know, if you get married, you, 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 your biological clock is there. Are people that have been married 20, 22 years, they still don't have children. So it's not about biological clock. So you need to first count the cost. This marriage thing, can I do it? Can I live with someone else? Can I manage? You know that there are some people that they can't stand someone else being around them. Someone cannot share their, their, I put slippers here, if you put leg inside, it frustrates me. You can't marry you. You can't marry. That I was eating something, and then somebody put spoon inside, they won't eat again. You can't marry you. Especially as a man, you can't marry. Because there's no woman in this world that I know that she and her husband are eating, she will not put hand and take meat. And her own food is there, she must put hand. So all those little, little things that annoy you, if you're the kind of person that gets irritated easily, you can't get married. Any small things upset you, you can't. So you need to count the cost and really know what marriage is really about and what you are planning to enter. The second thing you need to focus on. And if I, before I jump to that, I need to say this. Because Valentine's Day is coming. And this is where a lot of single girls get into trouble. You know that this guy is not good for you. You know that he doesn't make you better. You know that he's a problem. You know that he beats you. You know that he's been cheating on you. But on Valentine's Day... Because he buys you flour and everything, you forget your, your brain. You don't want to be the only one that does not put Valentine picture on social media. Let me tell you, half those people that are putting things on social media, they sent it to themselves. They will buy it and order it and, you know, dispatch. Dispatch, I can dispatch from my house to my house. It's nobody's business. I will dispatch it and then I will now take picture and put it on social media. No, nobody needs to know. And that's the problem. So people are under pressure for things that are not real. I know how many young girls are planning to get this virgin this week, this coming week. They're going to make the mistake of their lives. There's one girl that used to be in our church many years ago. Many beautiful... Ah, Pastor Emmanuel. 
beautiful girl, well behaved, good girl. You know when you see wife material 100 years? That's that girl. But I found out this girl had HIV. How did it happen? She had been keeping herself for then her friends now started abusing her. Final year, you don't know what it's like to have a boyfriend. You don't know what it, what, you know that kind of thing. So one boy that had been her, she now agreed. Valentine's Day, that they will have sex for the first time. That's how she had sex with this boy. I hated it. She felt dirty, she felt so she stopped. That one time, oh. After a few weeks, she started feeling somehow. After a few months, she started feeling sick. They would take her from this hospital, take her to that hospital. Taking her everywhere to treat her until they found out she was HIV positive. By the time she reached out to this, her ex-boyfriend, who she had broken up with, the boy was dead. Dead. So those of you that are planning that, oh, I know he's going to buy me perfume, you better plan to buy perfume back. Perfume begets perfume. Don't wrap yourself as present and say this weekend, as you give me perfume, I'll give myself as present. It's not equal, though. Ladies, ladies, are you in the room? So as he's buying you perfume, what do you buy? If he buy you cake, what do you buy? Yeah. Praise God. And I thank God Pastor K spoke about personal foundations. Because when you are building, the first thing you lay, remember I said we're going to talk about it as a house. First thing that you lay is foundation. A basket said something, and that thing just struck me there. There are two foundations. Yes, you build your foundation on God, but there's also personal foundation. Personal foundation speaks of your character. It speaks of your own personal preparedness. Some people, the only thing they can do is cook indomie. How do you want to sustain marriage with only indomie? Oh, my husband, will be, he'll be able to we'll order food. Anyway, when we're dating now, he takes me out all the time. He cooks. <laughs> my boyfriend can cook. Boyfriend cook. Man friend used to expect you to cook. Because even if your husband can cook, he wouldn't expect to cook all the time. Small, small things like that. Character. How do you talk? You know, and unfortunately, those things start as children. And that's why I'm so big on parenting. It starts as children. Small, small children, their mouth is sharp. And they, and they encourage it these days on social media. If a child's mouth is sharp, they are rude, they can talk, they will just do YouTube channel for them. And people will be liking and subscribing and following. Ah, she's so sharp, she's so sharp. Plantain, they rot in, we say they ripe. It's not sharp, she's rude. Let's call it what it is. She's badly behaved. You don't have respect for elders. So if you can't respect your elders, it's your husband you respect. That when you uh, see me, I know myself. When I see when I, I will finish him with my mouth. In fact, this, the way people even speak to their husbands these days, my heart can't take it too. The other day, one woman was shouting at her husband at a wedding. She was shouting, hey, God. I say, Auntie, don't be angry. This man, how many years he give you? This man, if no give you seven years. My husband was my classmate in secondary school. We're classmates. I can't even shape my mouth. There's, it's, it's, it doesn't form. Somebody will tell her husband, you are a stupid, useless man. As it came out, not that your, your tummy made noise, it came out from your mouth. <laughs> that your husband is a stupid, useless. It is the, the lack of reverence. And these things start from foundation. It starts from small things in the house. Oh, this one, she cannot do anything, leave her, or she's not built for stress. But life is stressful. She enters a marriage and little stress comes and she says she's done. You say, ah, this one, no, they don't talk to her. If you talk to her, she will carry face. But they will talk to her in marriage. Her mother-in-law will talk to her because she will correct her. Her husband will talk to her. I can't count the number of men who are living in fear today because they can't speak to their wives. Because if you talk to her, she will carry face. So, if she carry the face, she carry and come back. You say, well, I can't, uh, you don't understand, but same. If I tell her, she will, for the next couple of days, our house will be hell. In fact, sometimes she even tries things to leave. To wear. To wear. The problem is that there's still road in front of your house. If you were around yesterday, you understand what I mean. For some of us, road no day there again. It's because, and I, and I still blame parenting. It's still... A lot of the problems we have in marriage today is a result of bad parenting. The 
don't take nonsense from a man. Don't tell, we take nonsense from each other. That's marriage. Human beings bring nonsense. Let's tell ourselves the truth. Because the way we have made and painted marriage is like all the movies. Do you know how many people script all those movies? Oh, can't you see Adam I was talking in the movie? Do you know the script writer? The script writer that is writing for him. That's not how he talks. You teach your partner how to love you. When we first got married, hmm. like if I were, if, before we even got married, because some days when I sit back here, I'm, I, I'm just in awe of what God would do if you will hand over your life and your marriage to him. This was okay that he's preaching all this relationship. Sometimes I will hear him when does I say, hmm, relationship coach. Because when I married this man, he was not like this at all. He was so un emotionally unavailable. You'll be talking to him, you'll be looking at me like, this thing is not rich like this. Let's move on. We can't move on, sir. Let's deal with the issue. So when we first started our relationship, I would go and visit him, and then he would maybe walk me to the bus stop, or sometimes when he's being very generous. Basket doesn't like walk. I married a man and does not like stress. He will walk the smart way. He will not walk. He doesn't like, st you can't stress him in this life. I mean, I knew what I was marrying. So I don't enter marriage and be saying, why can't they stress you? Why can't they? I knew. So the day he decides to go and drop me, I really appreciate it because I know that it's a sacrifice from the depths of the soul. And he hates driving in Nigeria. So he will drop me, you know, and then when he has dropped me like that, he will not talk to me again for about a week. Uh -uh. He will not call. He will not do anything. So I'm not in I say, what's the problem? You're not calling me. And I say, ah. I was planning that when we see, I'm saving all my gist though, for when we see. See, so if I call you now, the day you come and visit me, what am I going to tell you? I say, no, that's not how you do a relationship. You talk to me, you will call me, you know, just check up on me. He say, eh, okay, no problem. He dropped me next week. The next day, he now call me, hello? I say, hi, he say, I'll find I say, make I hear you. I say, you can't hear me. <laughs> how can you hear me? I'm not one of your guys. You will call me. You say, how are you, baby? How are you, do how are you doing? I miss you. All those kind of things. You say, ah, okay. I should go. <laughs> and you see, the beautiful thing about him is that he was teachable. A lot of men are too arrogant to learn from their wives. Too arrogant. Why can't your wife? And most times, a woman is put into your life to make you better. When I met my husband, he was a spender. Hey. And if you are a saver, if you marry a spender, you will most likely marry a spender. But if you marry a spender, it can give you high blood pressure. You will just be looking. I went, oh God. I remember there's one, I almost passed out. I went to, I went to have our second child. So I was in America. So I went to buy, so as you know, I went there, went to buy things in the shop. So I was picking things because I knew how much was in the account. And pastor, even in today, it's not small money. I knew how much was in the account. It is, it's, the kind of, it's the kind of money that when you go into a shop, you don't check the price. You just say, I need this, I need this, I need this. But anything where they bill you, you, you got this. I didn't know that I didn't get it though. <laughs> I now finished speaking, got to the counter, gave them my card with arrogant self. Just gave them card with left hand. The woman just put it on front. She said, I'm sorry, do you have another card? This card is declined. I said, uh, and that's my friend. Here with you, she talk. She said, they said they declined your card. I said, she enough not be waiting, she talk. I said, try it again. <laughs> the woman did again. She said, oh, I'm sorry, your card has been declined. My tummy started turning me. I wasn't sure whether I was in labor. I carried my phone. I just moved back a bit. I carried my phone. I said, hello, honey. I said, they say my card is declined. He said, oh, I forgot to tell you, I moved all the money out of the account. I was sweating in winter in America. <laughs> so I went back. My friend said, what's happen? I said, I never know what's happen first. The woman on the counter was like, oh, we can put it on layaway. I just turned. I started walking away. She said, do you want me to keep it on layaway? I said, my friend said, should they keep it? I said, be standing there. They were so embarrassed. I'm already go. That's the kind of person, Pastor K, we, when we first got married, if me and him are owe you 5,000 naira, all of us would join our faith to believe God because we don't know when that money will come out. We did, then, eh, when we are 
<laughs> when we're drinking Gary, we'll be telling ourselves that it's fried rice and chicken. One day, in the midst of all of that, Mausman came back one day with a South African boabo. What's 200,000? And they said that that South African boabo used to eat one derica of rice and one Titus fish every day. We have not eaten one Titus fish for one week. That's how I stood like this. I didn't know whether to cry. I didn't know whether to pray. I didn't know whether to laugh. I didn't know whether to pack my load. But even if I pack my load, road no day, dear. So I stayed there and I had to ask God for wisdom. I don't have the time to go through any of my notes. I had to ask God for wisdom. Do you know what it means? <laughs> and like I said, I'm a saver. I'm not just a saver, I'm a planner. So I can, I can tell you my, like you know how I plan my life and the money I'm going to spend. I'm a budget. I'm a, somebody just scattering every, so it's not just my mental health. Because now people think it's people that invented mental health. Oh, I can't. My mental health. I can't. Pastor, I can't. I have to leave because of my mental health. My mental health that time. My emotional health. Even my spiritual health gone. It was. And one of the things that God used to bring me out of that thing was practical wisdom from the word. So you see, we can come here and give you many things. But there are some basics that you can't avoid if you're going to have a kingdom marriage. You cannot avoid prayer and you cannot afford to avoid the word of God. And I'm not talking about the word of God to use to go and abuse him. And say, you don't know that a man who does not take care of his home is worse than an infidel. Because that's the one you can quote. But there are things that God expects you to do. So I had to take off expectation and looking at him as my source to looking to God as my source, as my Abba. So when Pastor was doing some of those things, God had to teach me practical lessons. He said, go back. When you say you love him, do you love him? I say, yes. And you see, you have to be careful of conversations you have with God. God said, do you love him? So I was saying, yes, I love him. It's my, my eye and my sunlight. It's my sunshine and my rain. I was just talking about things. God said, eh. Then go back to 1 Corinthians 13. So I went back to 1 Corinthians 13. And God asked me, are you being patient with him? Are you being kind to him? And now that he has brought a buabo, you have remembered when he brought home... Ah, Pastor K has done me many things in this life. <laughs> I've been through a lot, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You see, I just remember. And you know, I'm saying this because somebody would sit there and think that, oh, this woman, uh-uh, Pastor K has been... Tra Pastor K travel flying all over the world. There were, sp there were sacrifices. This is work. Like I said to you yesterday, there was work in my life, but there's also work in his life. Because if you're going to have a happy home and you're going to build the kind of family God wants you to have, you have to do the work. There are times where you need to roll up your sleeves. There are times when you need to get on your knees. There are times when... You... I remember the first time... Pastor Kate, I don't... I can't remember. To be honest, I can't remember what that thing was. I can't even remember what the choir was. I can't, honestly can't. But I remember that I went into... There was a, a second room. So I went into that room and I was complaining. And I said, God, you told me to marry this man. God, I know. I remember. I, these are the scriptures. This is what you showed me. This was the revelation. These were the encounters. I see what he's doing. I, I was just going on, on and on. And God said, how dare you? How? I will never forget. He said, how dare you? Because I gave you him. So it's not my fault. He said, your own obedience is incomplete. You cannot avenge his obedience until your own obedience is complete. Go and honor your husband. Go and respect your husband. I don't say when first come, I'll carry my face. So, carrying face is not today. So when he does something to annoy me, I'll just be frowning. You know that you are not keeping malice, but you are keeping malice. <laughs> he said, "I'm talking to him. Did I not greet you this morning? What will you eat, sir? You will not be putting sir plenty so that. What will you eat, sir? Your food is on the table, sir. I will not be carrying my face, and then I'll be praying in tongues. Let me tell you those things. There is bad character, and that thing you are calling prayer, God is not receiving it." When you are using worship song to fight your husband in the morning. When your prayer altar. Let us pray that every useless decision making spirit in this family will be cast out of the head of this home. Baba. Hey, Baba. But you know you are talking to your husband. God is not listening to that rubbish you are doing. He's not listening to it. So I'll cry my face. I'll say whatever. I'll, I'll soon be done, sir. I'll be done. Whatever you, whatever you, uh, I'm, 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 not, I'm not angry, whatever you do. I said, carry my face, I'll be praying loud and everything. But I noticed something. I was praying, but Pastor K was praying louder. 
I'll be worshipping, you'll be worshipping louder. At some point, I started saying, what kind of, is this man really a man of God? That your wife is upset, you can't even come and apologize, you can't, what kind of man is this? Am I sure I hate God? I started asking stupid questions. There are times when Satan will ask you, did God really say? And when I was getting married, I was so sure. I was so convinced. But life will come and ask you, are you sure? So Satan will come, are you sure this man is really a man of God? Are you sure he's even who he says he is? How can he be? He's a wicked man. See, he can see that you are frowning. He can see that you are, you see all those, you are too faithful. It's not today. If I'm upset, I'll just start worshipping. I'm going to change that song, by the way. <laughs> because now you have known it. So you know when I'm about to report it to God. And then, and I will carry my face like that. So I now went to meet him after a while. Because God said to me, to talk to this, these are see God trained me marriage. Oh, he said, Go and talk to him. He's not a wicked person. Is that your husband that you think he's very he's not wicked it's because you are not, he doesn't read minds. I always tell women, men don't read minds, they read newspaper. Just go and meet him and say, see so, 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 and so. And the timing, the tone is very important. If you choose to fight at that time when he's telling you we can talk about this later, it will never end well. So I went to him and I said, Why are you? I said, you're a wicked man, no? He said, wicked. I said, yes, oh. New wife that I just married. I'm carrying my face. You can't even call me and say, baby, what's wrong? How can I make it better? You're not even asking me anything. He now said, ah, is that what that is? That he thought I was being spiritual, oh. <laughs> so that he was saying to himself that, ah, ah, this girl cannot, somebody I just married cannot just come to my house and challenge me spiritually. So as I was praying, he was praying louder because he was challenged. <laughs> That's when I knew that, eh? You see, these men that were following like that, men, they didn't do. If you as a woman don't understand that a man is different from you, you will suffer and you will struggle in marriage. So the biggest secret to having a happy marriage is having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we rise? Can we rise? Let's just pray this evening. Can we rise? Just take one second and just talk to God and say, Father, give me the grace to apply the things I've heard. Give me the wisdom to know the portion that I need to apply in my home immediately. Just take one minute to pray. Solid foundations for every home solid foundation will build to last There's something I didn't get to share today because, of course, I didn't have the time. But one of the graces I carry is for dealing with infertility. God brought me through that journey. I wish I had the time to share my story. God brought me through that journey. And after eight years, and ever since I carry that grace, we've, over, we've had over maybe 700 babies just from this. And so if there's someone, praise God, if there's someone in the room tonight, I don't want to leave this place without us kicking out infertility from this place. So if you are here and you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I want you to just raise your right hand. Don't even be embarrassed. And that right hand, as you're raising it, I want you to just put it on your tummy. If your husband is standing with you, I want you to go and stand behind her and then just put your hand on her tummy. Because we're doing this together. If your if your husband and wife are standing together, just stand. Praise God. Makali bo shata. Imbra de ko se te li ada kalu shata. Reke de yele bo shata li amamba hada kalada da ya bo shata. Engra da kari kele de de shata ya le kede za. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen, I need you to know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he will relent. Has he said something and has he not done it? There's nothing too hard for our God to do. This is the God that when he says a thing, it must come to pass. 
So tonight I join my faith with yours and I declare over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you because you are the same God that said that if we serve you, that you will bless our bread and water and that you remove sickness from our midst. Father, you are the same God that declared that none shall be barren in this land and there will be no miscarriage. You are the same God that says that you will fulfill the number of their days. I declare in the name of Jesus, barrenness is ended today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your word says that none shall be barren in this land, whether male or female. So whether the problem is coming from the man or from the woman, we declare they become fertile in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible tells us that when you said, let there be light, there was light. You said, let fish come out, fish came out. Which tells us that when you declare a thing, it must be come to pass. You spoke over these words that you said, let them be fruitful and multiply. Today we declare fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Amen. For every woman here, I declare that your children surround your table. Amen. So if you are struggling with secondary infertility, you have one. One child does not surround a table. I say have as many as you want in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that you are a fruitful vine in the heart of your husband's house. A fruitful vine means that you can bear multiples. So I release twins in this house. Amen. I release triplets in this house. Amen. I release quadruplets in this house. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. we declare, according to God's word, that none, no one is barren. Everyone bears twins. I declare that everything that your heart desires concerning how many children you want, what gender you want, in what order you want, is com accomplished tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. I declare that according to the time of life, by this time next year, you will come out with your testimonies Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. For we are confident that you are the God who can be trusted to keep his word. For we've prayed in the name that guarantees us an answer. Amen. We've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those that are single tonight, trusting God for a marriage partner. The Bible said, houses and wealth are things you can inherit from your father, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. I decree over all the single men that are here, God will give you a prudent wife. Amen. From today, your spiritual eyes will be open. Amen. You will start to recognize the woman you're supposed to marry. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We decree according to the word of the Lord. He said, your steps will be ordered of the Lord. I Amen. decree for every young woman that is here, even every young man, you'll be at the right place at the right time. Amen. I say you'll be at the right place at the right time. Amen. Tonight, we break the power of delay in the name of Jesus. Amen. There shall be no delay anymore. Amen. This is your season. Amen. This is your season of testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. And for every home here, we speak peace. We speak healing. Amen. We speak love. Amen. We speak unity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big shout. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate, celebrate, celebrate.